Would you agree that this code right here is... Let's, in let's increase the font a tiny bit. Control shift plus. Because clearly this dude doesn't know what he's doing. You got to hit the... Uh, click the... Uh, there you go. He's figured it out. So this guy, principal architect or whatever the hell his title is, and he doesn't know how to increase the font on Hey, that's Compiler Mr. Explorer. Principal Architect. Yeah. <laughs> Would you agree that this code on the left here is an accurate um approximation of what is is going on in a uh, and here let's let's change it a little bit um no nah, it's, it's it's gonna be fine as this um would you agree that this is an accident uh, an accurate approximation of um of what a filter view is doing um i mean if you're encoding the unary predicate to be that it's greater than the floating point number zero yes. so yeah so, so, so my what first thought is like we're, absolutely we're, not we're, because we are filtering code. we are filtering um all the elements of a range that are greater than zero and we're setting that we're setting those elements to be zero or so, sorry it's other way around we're filtering all the elements of a range that are um uh less than zero and we're ma we're setting them to zero yeah. And, and for, I mean, are we going to explain this? Cause the listener has no idea what we're looking at right now. We have a, you yes. want to explain it? You're, you're going to, you're going to just, you're going to explain the loop here. You're going to explain the code. All right. His function is called test search and it's got extern C, no except a bunch of stuff that should make you sad about C plus plus and a for loop it's and the, the, uh, the, two the only reason that it's extern C here is to make it easy to find the function in the assembly output that we're looking at. Oh, God. All right, here we go. Strap in for a technical uh, remaining however many minutes of part one and part two of this, uh, this live coding exercise. Um, and there's two arguments to this f test search function. One is a double star underscore underscore restrict underscore underscore A. And the other one is a size T called N. We then would have a for loop from I equals zero up till N, and then we're incrementing. And then we've got a while loop inside this for loop that is hard coding our unary predicate of trying to basically see if it's greater than zero and keeping it. And while it's greater than zero, it's incrementing incrementing so we're sort of doing we've got two different places where we're incrementing but we're we're incrementing i so in both cases so it doesn't really matter and then anytime uh we find a negative number we set that number to zero yeah it's so pretty that, that, pretty that, horrific code it hurts my soul inner, that inner while loop is um uh is the find diff that we're doing in a filter view that that inner while loop is the thing where we're we're going to find the next element that matches the predicate. You know what? I I know where I kind of feel because I'm looking at the um the output of Clang not being able to optimize. I just want to like jump jump ahead to the end. Okay, all right. I've, well, well, I've, well, no, well, no, wait, wait, wait. On, I'm, I'm saying it. We I've so, we've solved this problem in array languages because yeah, no, 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 don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. I want to ruin, ruin it, Bryce. Let me ruin it. <laughs> It, so okay, my I won't. So ruin I it, have asked. All I'll say is that array languages solve this problem because this API function, a filter function that takes a unary predicate, does not exist. And the first time I ever went to an array language and I tried to do a filtering operation, I was like, "What the hell? How come I can't filter something?" And that's because filtering something in an array language looks nothing like this. And the way they do it is definitely vectorizable. All right, back right. to you, and, Bryce. And 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 we are throughout this exercise going to get to a much better version of filter in my book mm, for, right. for the purposes of vectorization we have to qualify your statement because that's what we're trying to do here i think it's just better in general uh not just vectorization for loop optimization in general okay so i have instructed in this godbot instance i have um and we're using clang and i've instructed clang to emit some optimization remarks um, which you can you do with the uh, the dash r pass um, flags, um, which are quite useful. And in particular, I've asked it to uh, uh, to emit some some optimization uh, reports um, relating to loop optimizations. 
Um, and so there's, there's, there's two different remarks here. Um, Connor, would you care to let the listener know what these remarks are? It says remark, loop not vectorize, colon, could not determine number of loop iterations, bracket. Okay, and which loop is it referring to here? It's referring to the inner while loop. Right. And then the second remark says loop not vectorized. Um, and that is, um, uh, so, so, so that's also referring to that same loop. Um, but if we, one moment. Um, this, this is going to be really hard to split up. I feel like we're just going to have to release this as a long episode. So if we put a, let me see if I can remember the. It's uh yeah. So right now I'm drinking. If we tell Clang to attempt to uh, vectorize the outer loop, um, it'll tell us loop not vectorized, the optimizer was unable to perform the requested transformation. Um, basically, this is because the way that the Kling loop vectorizer is set up, it doesn't really do this outer loop vectorization. I mean, it can do some like reordering of loops and loop collapsing, but essentially because this, 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 we have this inner while loop that's inhibiting the, the vectorization of the entire loop. Um, so no vectorization here, and, and we have this scalar code on the right here. And, uh, and, and in this, sorry, this is the, the code on the right is the assembly code. And in this, uh, this assembly code, we have two actual loops. There's, there's the outer loop, and then there's the inner loop that does this search. Okay, now um, let's look at a different way to write this code. Also, in case, it's not clear from people that started to watch this video and didn't listen to the prior conversation. The reason why we have this inner while loop inside the for loop is to mimic the behavior of the views filter in C++20. Obviously, yeah. the more reasonable way to write this, if we weren't trying to replicate the semantics or the moral equivalent or of that function would just be to evaluate, thing, like to check have an if statement, is it greater the, the than zero? The thing that I just put on it. the screen. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's talk about the, the loop that I just put on the screen. Um, uh, which is which what is, I just described. You know, no yeah, while it's, loop, it's just an if function statement. test reference. And it's got that for loop that, that iterates through the indices. So it's a for loop from, from zero to n uh, uh, that iterates, you know, some, some variable i from zero to n, where n is the size of the, uh, of the input range. And then the body of this for loop, it does if, um, uh, AI is greater than, uh, zero, although I think based on what we said before, it should be less than zero. Um, then, uh, AI, then assign AI to, um, zero. Yep. Am I? Yeah. So this one should be. Okay, so so let's talk about how how what happens with this test reference loop. So um, for this one, the compiler tells us that it was able to vectorize this loop. And on the right here, we have some very nice, very compact uh, uh, assembly that vectorizes this loop, and and it and it, it I told it to generate. Um, output for the uh, uh, KNM architecture, one of the the Xeon Phi architectures that is now defunct, but has, it's an AVX five twelve platform. And and so what we see on the right here is in the inner body of this loop, there's four vectorized compare and in, in um, instructions, and then four vectorized move instructions. So not only does the compiler vectorize this loop, but it unrolls the loop a little bit. Um, uh, which is, uh, which is pretty nice. Okay. So, so this code can be vectorized. 
very nicely. Now we'll we'll put in the um does it matter that we're just zeroing these out and not erasing them and creating like a newly sized the the re the reason that we're doing a mem set operation here um is because this is uh, we we're looking to study um uh how loop optimizers view this code and so that means we're going to be staring into a lot of assembly and setting a value to zero is um very few assembly instructions doing like anything more complex like you know multiplying two values together or anything more complex than this would mean that the generated assembly would be longer and um when we are looking at five or ten different ways of writing this function we want the assembly to be something that's a that's going to be very short and sweet so that we can read it over and understand it and importantly so that we can like like we can see all the assembly for this function on a single screen and that we can like look at the assembly line by line and understand exactly what's happening and likewise that's why we've chosen you know a a built-in type double as our data type and why for the predicate we've chosen another some, something else very simple which is just comparing whether something's uh, uh greater than zero fair enough so and it, it doesn't you know we, we could we could write this code i don't think that it that it greatly affects um uh what's happening here if you if you the original predicate that I'd worked with was um a predicate that was solely based on the uh the index. So doing like i modulo two. Um and in that one, the compiler can do some even more clever things because it can sort of figure out the stride pattern, that it can figure out that it's every other element. Um and so that does mess a little bit with with the results that you see. So the nice thing about about this predicate is that it is a data dependent predicate. So the compiler doesn't know um, how many elements are being filtered out. Um, and speaking of that, when we look at the the reason that the compiler is unhappy about that innermost while loop, um, in our first example, the thing that the compiler tells us is loop not vectorized could not determine number of loop iterations. Um, and this is an interesting remark. Clang's loop optimizer remarks are not particularly descriptive. Um, basically you get like one of three or four different messages. This is one of them. Um, just because it tells you could not determine number of loop iterations, that's not necessarily that that's the true meaning of why it couldn't vectorize that loop. Um, however, um, I have not, I've looked at this at many compilers, um, uh, with the Intel compiler, with, uh, NVIDIA's HPC compiler, um, with a few other compilers. Um, and while most compilers do have mechanisms for, uh, vectorizing, uh, loops with unknown bounds, um, the problem here is in fact that this inner loop um it it sort of get gets merged with the outer loop and um uh, because we don't know um how many you know elements we're going to filter out in between each one um it does sort of throw off the compiler's ability to figure out um uh the trip count for this loop and that is what in, ends up inhibiting vectorization um but the reason is really more because of the the merger of these two loops. Um, okay, so if we go down to the this last example that I've gotten here, um, in this example, well, why don't, why don't you explain what's happening in this one? This function called test ranges, same arguments as before, except now we have a variable local called 
IDXS, short for indexes, and it is the composition of iota starting at zero to going to n, and then that pipe to views filter with a predicate that's checking whether our, our value is greater than zero. And after that, we've got a range-based for loop that loops through each of the elements returned to us by indexes and sets each of those values to zero by using it as an index into our original uh, array A using the bracket operators. Cool. What would be a better way to write this using range adapters? Uh, a way that would vectorize. I mean, this is uh, not a filter. It's a replace if. We don't have a range adapter version of a replace if. But if we had the C++ 26 pipeline operator, we could just pipe that to. Uh... Uh, you're being a little too clever because you're, you're you're thinking you're thinking about um, solving this particular problem here, where I want you to think about solving this in the abstract. So, like, yes, I know that we're using a mem set here. Uh, we're doing a mem set of everything that's you know AI or large or or larger than uh, than zero. But imagine that our predicate is just some arbitrary function p, and and the Thing that we're doing in the for loop is just some arbitrary function f. <laughs> I mean, so th then it, then you just go to the tr the generic version of replace if, which is transform. So but at the end of the day, you th want to use a filter here, I assume. Th there's there's two problems here. Realms really boils down to one problem. Um, one, we we have this nested loop. Um, and two, because of this nested loop, the compiler can't figure out the, the space that, that it's iterating through. Um, and I think that this problem is sort of inherent to how we designed, um, the filter view that it goes from N to N minus M and you don't know what that minus m is i now, mean no, keep, keep keep going yeah let's go back up to the thing that does vectorize here which is the for loop that has a simple if um in its body that says like hey if this element's filtered in then do this thing and otherwise do nothing well what if like we essentially built a filter that worked like that or like what if what if we essentially built a um uh, uh, a protocol um for composing these you know filter and filter like operations um where the the end consumer would agree that hey um whenever i see some uh some like empty um, tombstone value, I'm just gonna ignore it. So, so like, instead of you giving me a sequence of elements, you can give me a sequence of elements or empty values, and I'll just ignore the empty values. Okay. So uh, essentially, It is more or less what what you uh, what you said before. Like, what if we had a thing called uh, let's call it filter O, um, and it will uh, actually. I think we can just do this. So it's going to take an F and it's going to return a, um, 
uh, some form of transform here and this Have fun editing out this silence as I do not describe what is going on. Yeah, don't worry. This will all be cut. I mean, the people on YouTube are, are watching you type, but <laughs> the podcast listeners, this all got cut. So, I don't actually think I have option on food and fuel, but that's a pretty easy fix. Okay, so in, in this filter O thing is going to be, you pass it in an F and it returns you some, um, uh, some transform view that takes a transformation function that takes a T and returns an optional of T. Um, and what it's, and it, it has the, the, your predicate bound. And so what it's going to do is it's going to do if, um, uh, T, then return T, and otherwise return and or return T, which will be wrapped into an optional, and otherwise return a change that um, change that to a Turner expression. What are we doing here? Um, okay, you want to return? Um, be, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so the Turner expression is Much uh, return ft uh, question mark t colon stood null null up. Um, it's complaining about uh, that. Okay, all right. So so what so what filter o now does is filter o is a range adapter that you give it a function f. And um, for all of the elements in the underlying range that F is true for, the produced range has an optional with that value. And for all the elements that um, uh, the filter function returns false for, there's a corresponding empty optional in the um, produced range. Do you follow so far? I understand. I mean, I have qualms with your stating this is a better filter because it's not i mean it's maybe better for solving your problem but this is yeah, no longer this, this is no longer a filter this is exactly like replace if was the first thing i said but replace if is just a specialization of transform which is essentially what you have now and like you now yes. have a shape preserving um yes. operation shape in the map bound. and shape preserving is exactly the key intuition here the problem if you, the, if the you problem, preserve the original loop trip count throughout your range transformations, then the code will, will, will be able to be vectorized. That's the key thing. You want, if you want to keep everything shape preserving. So the, the problem is now, the, here. Pro the problem is that on the consuming side here in this for loop that consumes this range, previously the range was a range of, um, of indices and now it's a range of optional indices. So anywhere that we consume this, we would now have to add some logic that that checks. Oh, is this thing? Does this thing have a value? Um, is it an engaged optional? And if so, then I need to get the value, and otherwise, I ignore it. No, because well, that's not how you solve this problem. This is you're now in optional land, which is a monad. And so, I mean, honestly, if anyone's upset by that, don't be upset by that. It's a simple thing. But they're in in Rust and all the functional languages. They've got basically. Uh, what we should have is a range adapter called like transform maybe that will apply your unary operation only if the optional exists and it just does nothing for the null opt case. So like, forget that I said monad and monadic operation, but like the point is, is like you pipe from the result of filter O a like in Rust, I think it's called map maybe, or maybe map, but we would call it transform maybe or transform optional, you know, whatever you want to call it. Cause we call our map transform and we call our uh, maybe optional. So transform optional or something like that, that, that does this. The thing that I like my whole issue with this is that 
your answer kind of avoids like the problem. Yeah. Yes. The, the I high would like to avoid the problem. The high level summary is like, if you're using a filter, try to find a way to not use a filter. And well, okay. But the, Wait, I don't know if I committed this code yet. Um, and and my point being is that like if you have that sequence that is shape preserved and of optionals now, that there are monadic operations like filter map that gets rid of the options. So like at some point you on, still gotta, might I, need. I gotta log into the VPN so I can show you the next uh, atrocious thing. So my point talking. being is like at some point you might need to actually destroy the shape, in which case. We're back to what we were talking about originally, and there's no, no don't solution. Destroy the shape. Why would you need to destroy the shape? Because what if you need to end up? What if like what you actually need to do is filter out, like filter in the even numbers, and like you you want a, a vector of those even numbers at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, then like at the very end, then like my point being is if sure. if, if what, you what, consider what I'm a valid is like, solution like, is if, if 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 I'm feeding this stuff into uh, a for each that I want to be vectorized. Like, I would like that to happen. Right. Okay. So, well, now, like, now, you, my you point being is like, you, you cheated. The you cheated. Piece of code I want to show you. Like, the array, the array solution is exactly what you're saying, basically. It's that, like, find a way to express your problem that is easily, you know, vectorizable, which involves yeah. shape preserving op operations. As soon as you start doing things like filters that actually destroys the shape, then you're much like much less likely to have a accelerated solution. Yes, but you didn't actually create a better filter. You created a different algorithm. <laughs> um, I, I is my point. A better filter for like me as a loop optimizer compiler person. It's not a filter though. It's a transform. Um, yeah, but the thing is that. Boom. Okay. Are we going to name this episode? Stood. We had one called for each versus transform, and now we're going to have filter versus transform. So everything, everything to transform, the, the and you thing. think there. You can continue using stood views filter. I'm fine with that because I can write this function here: optimize range that. I use in my implementation of for each and optimize range just takes your range and it checks whether your range uh, has a base. This version doesn't have the overload for that, but it checks whether your range has a base. And if it does, then it applies optimize range to that base. And then whenever, whenever I, whenever I find in the, in the chain of your range uh, uh, adapters, whenever I find a, a, a filter view, I can just transform your filter view into my filter view that my for each knows how to unpack, which is what I do here. Yeah, but that not, doesn't necessarily save you anything. Not in all cases. What do you mean? It doesn't save me anything. In the it case me where, the loop. I mean, but in the case where I then need to do an actual filter where I destroy the option, the the null ops, and get rid of them, and end up with a vector that just uh, contains the optional values, and then unwrap them from optionals. You're still going to end up doing the filter that we didn't do here. Um. It, but like, so so sure, like you're talking I'll, about if I'm going if I'm going into a vector. Yeah, like if you're if you're collecting okay, but I'm not talking back. about if I'm going into a vector. I'm talking about that. Like I want to write a a fast stood for each that when I feed it in a range that has a filter view somewhere in it, that my implementation of for each can be vectorized. And all so, yeah, I got to so, do is I got to take your range and go and find all your filter views and any other annoying caching, uh, lazy views like this that are causing me problems and replace them with the you know my, my quicker version or my version that does the the tombstoning thing tombstoning thing i agree that this will work my the point that i'm making is that it only accelerates a certain category of problems like of the umbrella you know of the yes. of the problems that use filter the ones that will benefit from this optimization will benefit but then there are a, whatever percentage of the other ones that are just going to be as slow as they were before 
Yes. Which is fine. Which is fine. Sure. You're, ex you're accelerating a, a. But this lets up. me. This lets me write. This sort of code right here. Which I talked about in my uh, keynote at Array last last year. And actually, not, a keynote that you recorded. actually inspired on 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 this, uh, this podcast. We talked about how I was going to pull an audible and give a completely different talk, and I did. I do consider myself uh, your biggest source of inspiration. Yes, that is. <laughs> and so what I have here is this is this little library I've been playing around with um, called Spaces, and it's got a for each, and this for each is aware of this new Spaces protocol that I came up with, which is a space is essentially a collection of, of n ranges, um, each of which is nested within the next. Um, and I can take one of these spaces and I can apply a, 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 a range view to it, or I can apply a range view to just one particular axis of it. And this will generate code that will vectorize. It's really quite something. Like this is this is exactly the what I want out of a multi-dimensional iteration paradigm in modern C++. It I generates mean, efficient code and it's composable and it's composable using our existing co compositional primitives in this space, specifically range adapters. What I don't understand You also note that that my little implementation here has added some magic that uh, does the unpacking of the uh, of the tuples, uh, so that I don't have to do the uh, uh, the uh, structured bindings within the body of each of these lambdas. I, I've made my peace with not getting that language feature, but uh, I'm 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 going to make all of my algorithms do the std apply sort of thing, where if there's a if you if you send it through a, a a tuple of things, it's going to invoke your lambda with uh, though that tuple of things unpacked. I still want that language feature. Yeah, I mean, Here's sure, a... I do too. But until I until I get it, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this so that I have nice looking code. We're referring to a 2017 proposal that died or didn't have further work done. It called. Uh... What is it called? Generic lambdas with generic lambdas with structured bindings, something like that, or polymorphic lambdas with structured bindings. Go back to that example though. So here's the thing: it says memset diagonal two D for each filter. Like, why why are we using for each and filter? This is just a replacement. You get like but can, but you're, you're you're missing you're missing the point. You're missing. The I'm point missing the point it. because this example doesn't demonstrate the utility of what you're talking about. Like. It, yes, but, it, but it does but, work. But that that's that's only because you're not you're not thinking bigger. I don't want to have to be creative. I want you to show me a motivating use case and not the degenerate case that could be spelled more elegantly with a more precisely named algorithm called replace. The the key I'm thing not saying is that, that I want to do composition. Uh, but like, like this fun. composition is um like I, I believe you that like this, this innate, this shows the enabling of composing filter, uh, filter O, the optimized filter with with another algorithm for each. I, but, that, so um, filter O doesn't actually stand for filter optimized; it stands for filter optional, because it turns things into optionals. I just didn't have a good name for it. Okay, um, my point being is that. Uh, this this presentation, your code example here needs like a more motiv things. more motivating these are the example. things that I want to be able to write. What things? Like what I've got here, like you know, where I've got I'm filtering on different. I think I think and... Zoom is frozen because I'm still looking at the same 3D oh, for well, each that's, filter. That's your o. problem. I'm now on my keynote slides from last year. Are you sure you're sharing your whole screen? Yeah, I'm sure I'm sharing my whole screen. He said as he hits the stop sharing button, and we shared the whole screen. But I, no, I was sharing the whole screen. I was sharing the whole screen. You want what? I was sharing the whole screen. Oh, no, yeah, sorry. So you were saying now, I'm looking at your slide now. So what did you want? Like, like okay, you know, a, a, an example here would be if I want to take just the interior points of a particular extent 
and I want to, to, to stride through that extent and only take every other point. Like, like it's not hard to use your imagination and imagine that I would want to combine two different type of, like, like to do two different types of filters or, or to do something like drop take, although those two need a better name. I mean, and to then like listen, want to do a striding there. Listen, Mr. Like, like, Mr. Like, okay. listen, Mr. Principal Architect, you never go into a pitch and then you present something and say, listen, uh, Mr. Executive, it's not hard for you to imagine what I'm trying to tell you here. It, it, it is, it is, it is a, like the, the, if you can't be motivated by the need for compositional primitives to express multidimensional iteration, then like, I don't know how to help you. It's like, that's like saying like, I don't know why we need to have range adapters that compose I'm not, I'm together not saying because I'm we not... could just we could just call replace if we're we're you're you're barking up the wrong tree we should just I delete agree the fil filter that these compositional primitives are useful it. i'm just giving you a hard time for your bad examples is all i'm doing and saying my examples are glorious and generate beautiful assembly folks in the if for those of you watching this on youtube let's go down to the chat and we tell tell bryce that you agree with me that his for each filter O example is suboptimal. I I think that my people in the chat, my HBC people, will uh will be on my side here. That it's pretty amazing that we're able to write this code. I do have to go fix this to uh to use on extent. Uh, oh, look on. now now he's updating the example. Surprise! Yeah, surprise. well, it's because I uh, surprise I surprise. Up because this one I I can I can actually just do the selection um in the inner in the middlemost loop. And that's what I wanted to do for this example. Um although the odds of this code compiling is, you know, probably not great because I'm just writing it live here. But that seems like that's probably correct. Okay, let's I mean we got to wrap this up because we're now at the hour what? point here. But I no. got to say, if we switch back to your slides, I'm not fully convinced your filter O thing that get in here. works in this case, you know? Because the whole point of this... I, I, ha I, I have... I, I assure you it does work. Good but sir. like, do you, do you end up... So in in your you want you want to look at what filter no 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 answer my question I'm not saying it doesn't compile and it doesn't work do you with this filter O sort of technique on your slide deck slideware do you end up traversing the entire matrix so like say you you compose some some things in your spaces library that basically creates uh, the equivalent of like a mask that indicates which of your indices are you going to operate on. Uh -huh. Once you have this mask behind the scenes now, what I'm what I'm visualizing is a bunch of optional values and then null ops. But then, based on what you had before, you're 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 traversing every element now. So you're you. I think you are perhaps thinking that um, that that the loop that the multidimensional nature of the loop gets collapsed. And, and that was never the case. Yes. The, the, the way that the, that the spaces protocol works is that there is a, there's a meta function rank that you call in the space that tells you how many ranks. And then any space aware algorithm has to do a nested for loop for each one of those ranks. And you call MD range here it shows MD begin and MD end, but that was an earlier iteration of the idea. Now it's, you just call MD range. Um, it's like you call MD range, you know, one, MD range two, MD range, uh, or MD range two, uh, MD range one, MD one, MD range zero to get the range for each subsequent innermost loop. And you have to feed the value from uh, uh, from whatever outermost loop you're in to MD range. So it, it, when you're in, in, you know, the, the first like nested loop, 
um, or the first inner loop, you need to feed it the, the wherever your current location is in the outer loop into MD range so that you can incrementally build up the indices as you, you go down through this loop structure. It's actually, it, it, I don't, I, I hate to toot my own horn, but it's really actually quite brilliant. First I, of all, I, I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm pretty happy with myself. I've never heard a more false statement in my life that I hate <laughs> to toot my own horn. Bryce, <laughs> that's, so uh, that's... And actually that little fix that I just did uh, compiled without, uh, without any issues. So, you know, that's pretty nice. Look at that. A principal architect that still knows how to write code. <laughs> okay. Some tests <laughs> may have failed. It compiled, but it uh, miraculously uh, did um, not work. Yeah, we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out. Tomorrow. I mean, so to just circle back is that the reason that this is important and works and sort of uh, nullifies what I was upset about earlier is that specifically the use case for filter in this spaces and indices framework is exactly for the kind of stuff that you were showing. You're essentially creating, you can think of it as like a Boolean mask of like, which elements in this arbitrarily ranked matrix do I want to perform some kind of transformation on or operation on? And yeah. because of that, this fake filter is actually completely fine because really the filter we were using before that does that kind of nested iteration or uh, nested looping that Bryce, as Bryce described, it is not at all what we want to do. This kind yes. of transform and ignore some values is exactly what we want in this use case. Yes. So like I said, a motivating wow. example is really just all you needed, Bryce. Yeah. <laughs> Now I just got to figure out what exactly I did wrong here because I won't be able to sleep until I do. Well, we're not going to do that live on the podcast. So thanks for listening, folks. Bryce, anything you want to want to say to wrap up this? I think we we might release this as a 65 minute episode because I'm either that or we're going to make our listeners suffer and we're going to yeah, start part, we're going to we're going to start part 2 of this just like mid live coding. Yeah, what what did I do wrong here? All right. I got to go back to the god box. Bryce mic. does not have anything else to say. He's just <laughs> over indexing on his ability uh, his failing uh, test cases here. Yeah. Thanks for listening folks. Um Co feel, codes on feel, GitHub. It's feel not free to uh, let us know how terrible this format was. Um and next time Bryce tries to share code, I won't let him. I will. Thanks, I'll just put, I'll Thanks. Just put my foot down. I mean, we we decided. I gave I gave the APL yeah. show podcast mm -hmm. the um, hard feedback to not live code and not share things and not write on the chalkboard. And then three episodes later, here we are, Bryce breaking our rule. And uh, I'm pretty sure that was absolutely um, impenetrable for the listener, probably. If not, let us know, give us some feedback on this and uh, just really let Bryce know that you were unhappy with the format so we won't do it again next time. Hmm. We'll, uh, we'll talk to folks. We won't talk to you. We will, uh, <laughs> we'll talk again and you guys can listen to us in the future. All right, I'm super tired. I was up at 6 a.m. when I ran a 27K, which was a big mistake. <laughs>